Hi guys! So today um, the video is going to be about combustion analysis. You can find this on page 96 in your textbook, which is section 3.5 in the chapter. Okay, So we're going to start with just an idea of what combustion is, right? We're always going to take some sort of fuel. We're going to react that with oxygen gas and we're always going to produce carbon dioxide and water. What we see in this reaction is that that fuel is going to burn right, with oxygen and producing carbon dioxide and water. So if the fuel is going to have to contain that carbon and hydrogen, possibly also some oxygen, but we don't always get to know that. So we know we at least have to have some amount of carbon, some amount of hydrogen in that fuel to create our products, right? That's just balancing the equation. So how do we find out what that fuel is? Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, by measuring the CO2 and water produced We can use math to get the percent of carbon and the percent of hydrogen that made the original sample. even the percent of oxygen if in the sample if it has it. So again, we it doesn't always have to have oxygen as in the fuel, but it can. Um, and so that can be a, a part we need to make sure. So what we know, right, is that all of the carbon in the sample goes into CO2. All the hydrogen in the sample goes into water. The oxygens split. Some oxygen goes into carbon dioxide and some of the oxygen goes into water. And so for this, it just makes it a little more challenging, okay? So again, just like I normally do, I'm going to give you some steps. So that you can solve these problems even after I do the examples I'm going to do. Okay, so step one. The first thing you're going to do is have to find the mass of carbon from the mass of CO2. Step two, you need to find the mass of hydrogen from the mass of water. Remember we measured these, this is what was being produced. Sometimes, so I'm going to put a little star next to number three, only sometimes we're going to need to also find the mass of oxygen by subtraction. We'll have to also know the mass of the original sample burned and then we can subtract these masses um, the mass of the hydrogens and the mass of the oxygen so we can get the mass of the um, carbon and hydrogen so we can get the mass of the oxygen, okay? Then lastly, step four, right, we're in stoichiometry. What did I say? If you ever get stuck, what do you need to get to is moles. So we're going to find moles. I'm going to write it in all caps. Find moles of everything. 
carbon, hydrogens, and oxygens. And then just like in empirical formula, you're going to divide by the smallest. until whole. Remember that also came with unless it was 0.5 you needed to multiply through by 2. If it was 0.33 or 0.66 you got to multiply through by 3 because that's one third and two thirds. Um, if it was 0.25 or 0.75 you could possibly also need to multiply through by 4. So it gets a little more complicated than in Chem 1. Okay. So now let's do two examples. Um, the first example um, is an easier example uh, because in the question that I'm going to read to you, um, there's no oxygen, right? So um, our very first question says, many homes in rural America are heated by propane gas a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen. So we can tell in the sentence that it only has carbons and hydrogens in it. So when I'm doing this example problem, right, my first thing of information is that I just have C's and H's in my compound and nothing else. Complete combustion of a sample of propane produces... 2.641 grams of carbon dioxide and 1.442 grams of water. Okay? These are the only products. It says find the empirical formula of propane. All right. So to start this I'm not doing to start this problem, um, we're going to start with what was given to us. So we're given mass of carbon dioxide and mass of water. So I'm going to start with 2.641 grams of CO2. Step one tells me I need to find the mass of carbon from that mass of carbon dioxide. So to get from mass of carbon dioxide to the mass of just carbon, I first need to divide by the molar mass, right? I got to get rid of those grams um, of CO2. And CO2 weighs 44 grams for every mole of CO2. For every mole of carbon dioxide, there's only one mole of carbon atoms because there's only one carbon in carbon dioxide. So that's also one mole of carbon atoms. So now I know my moles of carbon um, I can then find moles of carbon goes to 12 grams of carbon because carbon weighs 12 grams per mole. So in my handy dandy calculator, um, I get 0 0.720 grams of carbon. Okay, that's step one. Step two says find the mass of H from the mass of water. Okay, so my mass of water was 1.442 grams of H2O water weighs 18 grams for every mole of water however for every mole of water molecules I have I get two moles of hydrogen okay and so um, if I have two H's here that means I get double the amount of moles of hydrogen atoms um, that had to go into that water. And then one mole of just hydrogen weighs one gram. So when I take my 1.442, I divide it by 18 and multiply it by 2. Um, I get 0 0.160 grams of hydrogen atoms. Step three in this case, find the mass of oxygen by subtraction. Because they told me that this was just carbon and H's, I actually don't need to do step three. Okay, I'm just going to move on to step four, which is finding the moles of everything. So step four, I'm going to take my 0 0.720 grams of carbon, divide it by 12 grams per mole, and that's going to give me 
0 0.600 moles of carbon. I'm then going to take my 0 0.160 grams of, of hydrogen and divide it by one gram per mole. And that's going to give me times one divided by one, 0 0.160 moles of hydrogen. I recorded that wrong because my son won't go away and he's, he's sitting here shaking next to me. So I wrote the number down wrong, okay? So it's 0.72 divided by 12 is 0 0.0600. James, it would be very helpful for my students if you were not distracting me by jiggling next to me for right now. So I'm going to divide by the smallest, which is 0 0.0600. That gives me one hydrogen or one carbon atom. 1.16 divided by 0 0.06 um, gives me 2.66. That's in that danger zone, um, so I'm going to have to multiply through by 3. I'm not going to round this up, okay? So this is going to give me 3 carbons, and 2.66 times 3 gives me 8 hydrogen. So my formula would be C3H8. Okay. Let's do one more example. In my uh, next example... The question reads, a compound containing an unknown is combusted. 10.68 grams of the compound, so I'm given 10.68 grams of the sample, the original sample, is combusted yielding 16.6 zero one grams of carbon dioxide and four point three seven grams of water. The molar mass of the compound is one hundred and seventy six point one grams per mole. What's the molecular formula of this compound? All right. So uh, thinking about our steps, we're going to start with step one. Uh, step one is to take the mass of the carbon dioxide and find the mass of carbon. So 16.01 grams of carbon dioxide weighs 44 grams per mole of carbon dioxide. For every mole of carbon dioxide, that's one mole of carbon. And then one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. So 16.01 divided by 44 times 12 is 4.366 grams of carbon. Step two, taking the mass of water to find the mass of hydrogen. So 4.37 grams of water Water weighs 18 grams per mole. For every mole of H2O, that's two moles of hydrogen atoms, and one mole of hydrogen weighs one gram of hydrogen. So 4.37 divided by 18 times two is 0 0.486 grams of hydrogen. In this problem, because we don't know if there is oxygen, uh, we're going to have to do the subtraction. So step three, we're going to take our 10.68 gram sample. We need to subtract out the mass of the carbon that was in that sample and subtract out the mass of the hydrogen that was in that sample to see if there's any oxygen. When I do the subtraction, I get 5.828 grams of oxygen. Um, yeah, that's a substantial amount. And so, yes, this sample does contain oxygen. 
Now for step four. Um, in step four, find the moles of everything. So we're going to start with finding the moles of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. 4.366 grams of carbon divided by 12 grams per mole of carbon gives me 0 0.363 moles of carbon. 0 0.486 grams of hydrogen divided by 1 gram per mole gives me 0 0.486 moles of hydrogen. And then I also need to do the oxygen, 5.828 grams of oxygen divided by 16 grams per mole for oxygen gives me 0 0.364 moles of oxygen. I found the moles of everything. Now I'm going to divide by the smallest, 0 0.363, 0 0.363, 0 0.363. When I divide 0.486 by 0.363, I sadly get 1.33. Again, I can't round that down to a 1. I'm going to have to multiply through by 3 for everybody. So I get 3 carbons, 4 hydrogens, and 3 oxygens. I get C3H4O3. That's not my molecular formula, that's my empirical formula. So remember to find the molecular from the empirical. I have to take the mass of the molecular, 176.1, divide it by the mass of my empirical, which is 88 grams per mole, and that gives me 2. 2 times that empirical formula, distribute, you get C6H8O6. Done. Thank you for watching.